In this video, we are going to solve lead code problem number 283 and it's called move zeros. And the problem statement is very simple. It's one of the year problems asked in Facebook. And here you are given an array. It will have some zeros and some non-zero numbers. Your task is to move all the zeros to the end. So first all the non-zero elements should come. Then in the end all the zeros. And uh, one constraint here is that uh, the relative ordering of these non-zero elements should not be changed. So 4, 2, so it should be, the output should be 4, 2, 4, then 3, then 5, then 1, then all the remaining zeros. So we have not changed the order. And other constraint is that uh, you are not allowed to extra space so that uh, you count all the zeros or copy the non-zero elements first and then based on how many zeros are there you append in the end those kind of stuff are not allowed so you have to do this all in place that is you are not allowed to use a space of the order of n you have to use constant space o1 and time should be linear so uh, what approach we are following is that uh, we start from beginning and uh, when we uh, we have a pointer to a zero element and a pointer to a non-zero element. Let's say this is zero and n denotes non-zero index. Here the element is non-zero, here the element is zero. There are some elements in between. So when you see that there is a non-zero element to the right of zero element, then we can swap them. So that zero element goes in the goes after this non-zero. So this is the idea. So so if we start with here. If we have one element, we will not proceed or less than one. Then also nothing to do uh, because if there is one element and it's zero, then you can't do anything. It will remain that. And if it's non-zero, then also the same. If it's empty array, then also you don't need to do anything. So we will assume that it's more than one. So we start with 0 being here and non 0 being here. Now uh, we will advance our 0 pointer till we reach a 0 vector, uh, a 0 index. So now it will come here, still not 0. It will come here, still not 0. So it will come here. So now 0 is here. And then we will see non 0. Is it non-zero? Yes. But uh, it's, is it uh, more than Z? No. So we cannot swap because zero will be, our plan is to move the zeros to the right. Here if we swap, we are bringing zero to the left and non-zero to the right. So we will look for a non-zero element more than this Z. So whenever N is less than Z, then what we will do, we will initialize n equal to z plus 1. So we straight away can move n here because there is no point in looking for non-zero elements to the left of first zero element. And this is by the way first zero element. There are other zero elements as well. So we will initialize n to z plus 1 if n is less than uh, z. So n comes here but it's non-zero, so we will keep moving next. So we come here. Is it non-zero? Yes. So we stop now. We have got one zero index and a non-zero index more than zero index. So we will swap them. So now what will happen? We will get a three will come here and zero will come here. Then we again uh, keep looking for a zero to the right. So we come here, we find a zero element. So now zero is here. And also we advance this in n because now it has zero. So our uh, check that while a of n not equal to 0 or uh, a of n is equal to 0 
and n is less than a dot size we will increment non zero so here this condition will fail so this is equal to zero so this loop is satisfied and it will do n plus plus it will come here again it satisfies this so again it will do n plus plus and n will come here now this condition is not valid so n will stay here and z is here so we again change these uh, so this becomes 5 and this becomes 0 now we will move z next so z will come here and n is now holding 0 pointing to 0 so it will move next and it will come here so this is our current n and z so again we will swap these so uh, this becomes 1 and this becomes 0 now we will look for next 0 we will come here and stop here because it got 0 at the very next index then we will look for a non-zero towards its right and we did not find anything it, it uh, violates this condition it reaches n so it will terminate and there will be no more swapping so let's print the final result it's 4 2 4 3 5 1 then some zeros so we can leave it and now let's uh, write the code for this in lead code so if uh, nums dot size is less than or equal to 1 then return and we will initialize z equal to 0 n equal to 1 so both should be uh, less than nums dot size and z should be less than n If z is more than n, then we are basically done. So if so, we need to check uh, if n nums of z is zero, not zero, then we will increment z. So while z is less than nums dot size and nums z not equal to 0 then we do z plus plus and if n is less than z then we will do initialize n equal to z plus 1 and this we needed once in the beginning if you remember uh, when we first moved z and it came here our n was pointing here so we moved it to here so this is required for beginning so now we will do the same check for n if n is less than equal to z that is we did not find any n more than z or n is greater than equal to nums dot size that we have reached till the end or z is greater than equal to 
nums.size again these two are for same thing we have reached till the end we return and what we need to do when we find an nz we will swap them so you can write in temp then store nz then nz equal to nums n you can do a regular swapping like this but i will tell you a ready made c++ function so first let's do it with our normal swapping thing temp equal to nums of z nums of z equal to nums of n and finally nums of n equal to temp so this would work let's try it out uh, we got some runtime error okay so mistake seems to be here we are doing it for n but we copied it from z and we left it like that let's try it again and now it works uh, so let's go ahead and submit it first then we will see our C++ function so it's uh, quite good space is quite good uh, time is also not bad it's close to 95 percent so instead of this regular temp uh, regular swap you can use iter swap function that is already available in c++ and it accepts two iterators and then what it does it swaps the values that those iterators are pointing to not the iterators but the values so nums dot begin plus this is the beginning first index so if we add z the iterator is point to the uh, zero element index and the second is nums dot begin plus n and let's run it first so it does the same thing and there should not be any significant difference here it's just that we have uh, a one liner code where we needed three lines for swapping and you can see it got back to this same runtime so there is not much difference it's just that uh, you are saving two lines of your code 